That'll be our datum edge. Is that your top tip of the day? No, do it however you want, but this is how you'll get the best results. This is my newest toy. Let's machine. So, check it out. February in the UK. Sunshine. And seem as though it is another dirty shed product. There's a McDonald's on hand. A McDonald's. But it. It's quite a regular feature, isn't it? Well, it kind of seems to be. You're a very generous man bringing your uh, dirty Donald breakfast. Well, thing. it's not because we're fat, greedy. <laughs> though, it's is not it? that. No. <laughs> Where have you been this morning, then, Al? Been to Duffield's, our uh, timber supplier, to uh, basically pick up our oak. So, uh, do you want to do my little? We're doing your little. Yeah. Okay. Just a sec. Well, you'll have to direct me because I don't know what yeah. you're doing. Right. Okay. Morning, Mark. How are you today? How are you today? I'm good. So oh. here we are with another dirty shed project, and Uncle Al has asked to take the lead this morning. So here comes some nonsense. Nonsense, oh indeed. So right, just what are we doing then today? Well, just getting this little sketch here done. So we've got a really interesting project for you today. Uh, something you've already seen before, but we're actually going to show you how we make them. So let me get this little sketch up here. Right, okay, we're almost there. Get that put away. Right, let's have a little look. What we're going to do today... We're going to make a prison door. You're making a door then? We're making a door. It's going to be very similar to the door we made for the little alehouse in Harrogate. So the client saw that door, funnily enough, and then basically loved it. They've got a grade two listed property in Thornton in Bradford, a couple called Rachel and Ben. And they basically asked me to make them a door. When I say me, I kind of mean Dirty Shed Creations, really. So, um, um, yeah, we've got the oak this morning. We'll go and show you that. Um, and yeah, we've got basically a two week window now to do that door in, which is plenty of time to allow for all those little flourishes and embellishments that really make a project. You know, we could probably make this door in about three or four days if I was pushed, but you don't then have the kind of the space up in your head to kind of create all those little additions that really make these projects sing in my kind of opinion. Cool. So yeah. this is our first commish. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Big yeah. leagues. Let's go and have a look at the oak, shall we? Bosh! Come on. It's a bit of a mess in here. <coughs> it always is, mate. Yeah, I know. We're making a door prison styly. Well, I was going to say that, but I hated it when I, I almost I almost voiced that and then hated it. Oh, oh sunlight! Crap. Did it just kind of blare out? Boom! Sunlight. Watch, watch your steppies. Ah. Yeah. Bloody expensive stuff for that. <laughs> Pull these out and have a little look, shall we? That's a nice plank. Bit of detail. So our door is actually 76. Our door is so wide. It's not very wide actually, is it? So each of those planks are 25, but they won't be by the time we finish, which is a shame because we could have made this with these three big planks, which would have been quite nice. So what we need to do is work out the most efficient way of pulling 760 mil with these planks, because we don't want to waste this. I over-ordered on purpose. <laughs> That's quite nice with that too. But then that's equally nice there, isn't it? Which grain will machine up best? Probably that one. So let's keep let's pull that out. We're gonna lose a little bit here and there on those anyway, so actually that'll probably come in about right. Uh, 
You know, uh, what would be lovely is to make this door for Rachel and Ben out of English oak. But the fact of the matter is, you just cannot get it. You just can't buy it. So this is 50 mil, and I think it generally means that it'll be a little bit over. Yeah, it's 55 mil stock. So it should plane up at somewhere near two inches. Our door thickness is 45 mil, so we've got plenty in here and it allows us to take any kind of like movement out of the timber when we come to machine it. As it happens, those are really, really nice and straight, so we won't have to do that. I would imagine this oak is probably French. Um, it's kiln dried, so it's, it's kind of joinery standard. Uh, it's not cheap, but then what oak is cheap? Uh, but it's, it's lovely timber, there's a bit of detail in it. I think this is called what they call first and second grade, which means that you'd get big knots like this. You know, I think they, they make the timber knots and stuff like that. This is going to be a, a, a door construction, probably unlike the kind of... I think you'd struggle to find someone who's making a door this way. We've made quite a few of these now and they've never failed, have they? So, um, what are you trying to say, Watson? It's an unusual way to build a door, but I kind of think, well, you know, it's, it's you know, we're, well. Unusual. Well, it is unusual, isn't it? Yeah. I, I mean, you don't see doors like this, yeah. unless you go into a castle or something like that. So what I want to know in the first instance is which way the grain's coming through on these. Oh, look at this one. And what that means is, so, my planer will plane the top end. So we will be planing this end first. That one will be planing that end first, just because of the way the timber is. This one will be that end first. And that one there will be that end. Why? Because what I like to do with these is, you can see from this piece of timber here, you can see that that, is a very is, is shaped like that so I want to take off the top here because both of those edges will run nicely through the planer we do it the other way around it's going to be rocking as it goes through the planer so we'll, we'll put that on this edge uh, take the top off and then we've got our nice kind of what would you, what as a machinist you'd maybe call a datum that'll be our datum edge is that your top tip of the day no do it however you want but this is how you'll get the best results. <laughs> Let's machine. I think you're local, say. This, uh, this machine should auto feed, but what we've got is this timber's been in a warehouse and it's just got this, first off the surface is reasonably rough, so it's catching on my table. Um, I use this machine kind of on a weekly basis and some of these machines with these big cast iron tables, unless you use them every single day, they kind of get this fine coating of rust, if you like. That adds friction to the table and it stops the, the wood feeding. But we've also got another problem here. If you see this here, it's crushing the sawdust into the top of the wood. And what it is, is my extraction setup isn't the best. So I think what we're going to do is just a really quick bit of maintenance on that. So this is your wax? This is just wax in the bed, yeah. Should just hopefully, you'll see the difference straight away.
some educational value. What? Well, maybe, maybe if if I may be so bold, uh, YouTube. Um, uh, right, yeah. So when I'm doing this, we've talked about okay, we've we've solved the problem of feeding. Uh, usually, you can use something like a dry, uh, a dry kind of lubricant, like dry silicon or dry PTFE. PTFE tends to be a bit expensive, but that's what I tend to use on this. But as you can see, something as simple as a candle works quite well. Um, the problem, the problem with candles and stuff like that is, if you apply it too heavily, when you're running your timber along, it gets into the grain, and that can affect your finish later on. It won't do in our instance because of the finish that we're applying to this timber. But it's worth, you know, worth. You know, worth knowing that, and also, you know, be aware of when you're spraying PTFE onto your table, it will get onto your timber. So, you know, there is an issue there. We always like to machine, I, I like to machine with the cup of the timber upwards to start with because the roll that the cutter here is to the top. So, the cut that's been taken is the top of the timber. So, if we, if we turn that up and we've got a piece of timber like this and we put it through, there's a, a tendency for it to rock or it can find a different point to go through at each side. As we're machining this, so we've machined it twice, three times on one side now to get kind of a 100% plain finish. Then we've machined it once on the top. When we're doing this, what I like to do is have it on my table saw and I kind of get down here. Now you can already see those planks are pretty flat. They're not bang on, but then, because again for us that's not, well, when I say they're not bang on, I mean, you look through there, they're so close. Uh, so yeah, so what we're going to do, we're at 50 mil at the moment, so we've still got the ability to take another 5 mil off. Then we'll get a square edge on these, uh, then we'll probably parallel them through the, um, the planer. Oh, actually, that's a point. Here's my mum. Shit, they won't go through that. Morning. Hello. I'm sorry, are you filming? Hiya. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we are, so go on, off you go. <laughs> oh, I borrowed one of your candles. You're right. Yes, thank you. Good, thank you. One of your candles. It's the one that melted for the people of YouTube. Thanks, Mum. Love you. Uh, you know, looking down there, that timber. It's good timber, this. It's really good timber. So, I think really, we just need to keep going. Measure. There you go, do you want to see? So there we are at 45 mil. There we go. So our the door that we're fitting to, this distance here, I've we've machined our door at 45 mil. That's a four that's as near as damn it, a 45 mil kind of keep. Yeah? Yeah. So that theirs is 35 mil there. So the idea is that we're going to stand our door because we want that chunkiness. We're going to stand our door back off the front. So that's all positioning hinges. That's fine. I just want to double check we can do that and it's going to look all right. I think it is. So yeah, we're sorted. So what, what, what's our next, what's our next kind of process? Okay. Well, if we look at that, we look down the length of this timber here. So this is catching front and back, which means that this plank is bowed like that. Well, yeah, show me. Have a look underneath, you can see daylight. Oh, sunlight. Daylight. We're going to set this up as a jointer, and um, we'll show you how we do that. Okay, so first things first, we'll get our extraction in. It's this. So let that down, we pop our extraction underneath this time. So as a so basically a joint of planes, you put the timber onto the cutter so it planes from underneath. Okay. That goes in there. Good to get just right. Yeah. This is the depth of the cut for the jointer. So we've got 
one mil to all the way to six mil. Six mil's crazy. I bet this would do it, but we're not going to try that. We've essentially got these that are as near as damn it parallel. Um, so what do we need to do now? Well, we need to get one of these edges square to those two parallel faces. So uh, let's set this up. That's actually pretty good. Can you see that? Let me just tighten that down and see what happens. Well, let's see, this is it. To get it absolutely cocky balls. Yeah, there you go. So, so what we've got is we've got, if we run something flat against there, i.e. our parallels, we know that they're gonna come out square. So before we start, I'm just gonna measure. Yeah, we've got 55 mil showing. Uh, get my gloves on, sharp edges, sharp, sharp edges in a lady's hands. It's worth looking at the timber, so what I'd suggest we're going to do is this. We're probably going to run it on so far, run it on so far, and then run it right across. Gilbert Jackson. So can you see down there? See that's a square edge. You really want to be looking down the length of the there. It's not quite right, but it's about bang on. It's a ruler on a bit of wood, what? Yeah, but I'm trying to show that this is a straight edge, so that timber underneath is now straight. And then hold on. Lift it up then. Put it back down. Uh, what is it Al? It's a straight edge. We've taken our two parallel sides, we've made sure our fence was square when we put them over the jointer, we've run them one way, we've flipped the board, we've run them another way, so if there is a fault we should hopefully halve that fault, um, and there we go. So what have we done? We've got this face here and this face here are square to this face here. So what have we got at the moment? We've got one face that isn't square. Actually it is, but anyway, uh, inevitably there'll be somewhere along here. Yeah, there you go, how about that? You can see that gap in there, so we know those two aren't square. So, uh, what do we do now? So the next process is earphones on. This planer will plane up to kind of 23, so like nearly 10 inches deep, it'll plane to. So we've planed, the edge that we've just planed is on the bottom here. So what do we do? We take these timbers, we get them thrown through here again. So you know we do that. So that's our plain edge that we've just passed over the jointer. done with that now? Yeah, we can't do this one because it's too too deep to go through this planer so we have to do this a different way. These are all done now so we've got basically PSE timber now, plain square edged. That's the face we've just done. <coughs> nice and square. Actually you know what? 
You know what? No, 24 and a half. 23 that'll go to. Nah, won't go through. Hey, but that's all right. Because there's usually, like anything, and in joinery particularly, there's always like two or three different ways of doing stuff. So, here we go. That's 24.6. Yeah, 25.8. So we are a bit out. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it down to 24. That wobbles a bit, so that could be a problem. So what I usually do, pop it behind there, just so that doesn't move. Okay. Let's get a bit of blade out. Classic example there of halfway through the cut, your glasses fog up, you can't see a thing. To me, the safest thing at that point is to get rid, get them off. Um, I'm sure there'll be a lot of people who'll disagree and all sorts of other stuff, but it's one of those mornings today where it's that cold that <laughs> the minute you put them on your face, bang, they just go, I don't like it. Okay, so never leave a saw sticking out of the table get that in. Everything's rocking a little bit today. It's because these have been moved around a little bit just of late. make a tabletop. You find that these planks will sit together nicely in probably one plane and not so much in another. Okay so we've got a bit more work to do on that one just from a, a jointing perspective but there's always a bit of tweaking to do isn't there? But you can see all that beautiful grain pattern in there two planks. Oh look, be interesting to know if that's grain up. No grain down. So what you generally do with these is back the grain. So the grain will go this way in this plank, so it will go that way in that plank, that way in that plank, that way in that plank, and that way in that plank. Let's just have a little look about. So we've got a couple of mil, how far over are we? See this is the other thing. We're at 81 and a half there. 81 and a half, so we are kind of parallel. So obviously we need to take that down to 76. And then the door height itself is 93. So, oh, give you an idea. Just goes to show you though, you know, if you're making a table Kind of process that's involved. Yeah, letterbox. Well, it doesn't want to be much more than that, does it? <clears throat> what do you want to do? Well, we've done a. I mean, you know, we're trying to kind of keep these kind of uh, films interesting. So I think rather than just sitting here and machining and machining and machining, we've already done about two and a half hours of machining to get to where we are now. It's not finished, but I'll tweak these to get them kind of um, to get them spot on. But I think what we'll do now is we will um, we'll get the sawhorses in here and we'll set up our new toy 
and we'll get some of the uh, steel kind of chops out. <laughs> okay, so this is my newest toy. I've been kind of eyeing these up for quite a while. I can't keep grinding metal. I think it's killing me. So we need a, a method for cutting metal quickly and uh, precisely. And this is what we've got right here. So this is our metal cutting bandsaw. Sorry, metal cutting chop saw. I think they call them a cut off saw. What are you doing cutting butterflies now? Yeah, we're gonna be cutting the butterflies. I think you've probably got some footage of us making these previously, haven't you? I'm sure there is. I'm just marking out 100 mil. Uh, we want all these to be kind of, have that handmade look. 16 of those we need, eight per side. Um, and then when we cut through, we're gonna cut through to on that mark. Yep, mark. Yep. We're gonna cut through on that mark, mark. Mark, 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 mark. Got a quick release on there. There we go. And I'll tell you what we can do straight off the bat of thunder is put an end stop in so that hopefully they're all the same. Okay, we've got 16 of these to make, let's get to it. Already steaming up. Disappoint much? Yeah. I like the sparks. This is visually boring, Al. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to find something that we can do that isn't me machining timber. So this is saving you a bit of time then, isn't it, Watson? Oh, mate, a hell of a lot. And it's also, it's not so much that, it's breathing in all that sh crap from the disc. But it's also accurate. Maybe a bit too accurate for that kind of handmade look, but you know. I mean, this would have taken me like two hours. That's nine. So much quicker, isn't it? It is. You cheeky little monkey. So let's just see how, how accurate we were, shall we? And uh, Stop shouting now. Yeah, let's just see how accurate we were. And this is, we haven't set this up, so it's a, well, you know, this might be horrific. I mean, we're probably within a mil, aren't we? Just look at the, the quality of that cut. There's very little burr. I mean, I wouldn't want to go and rub that, you know, I wouldn't want to go and rub that across my hand, but there is a burr there. But you know, on the whole, nothing like a tool that makes your life easier. I mean, I suppose they all are meant to, aren't they? But rather than chewing pieces of wood square. Signing off for day one? Are you happy with where you are? Could we do anything else? I was like, oh, wicked, because now you're going to get to choose like a rap song or some garbage bit, like that. Bit of rap, yeah? Yeah. He's machining wood. Mm -mm, mm -mm, yeah. You, see, no, you I need know to work on yeah, that. Yeah, I know. It's not great. Yeah, that was um, poor. 